Welcome to Happy Talks with Dr. Alice and Donovan. Dr. Alice Fong is a holistic, naturopathic doctor and founder of Amour de Soi Wellness. And Donovan Jensen is a software engineer and founder of HowToHappy.com. Together, they're out to cause more happiness in the world. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Happy Talks. So today, Donovan and I are going to talk about being happy for other people's successes when you're not feeling quite as accomplished or successful as you would like to be for yourself. So Donovan, what are your thoughts about this topic? Yeah, so the first thing that I'm kind of thinking of is, first let's, let's start with an example, right? So if I'm doing some job and my coworker is doing the same job and we both go for a promotion or something and they get it and I don't, I think that's like the type of scenario that this would come up in. And I guess like the first thing to think about is that if somebody else is successful in that way, mm-hmm. it directly impacts you or might feel a little bit heavier because it was like a limited thing, right? Like a promotion is a limited thing that only one person can get. So if one person gets and the other person doesn't, like it doesn't feel super awesome. But contrast that with a lot of the times when, at least for me or what I see, people not feeling happy for other people, it's in scenarios where the outcome doesn't actually impact their path at all. So for example, like I might feel a little jealous or not feel uh, super happy about someone else's success. If I meet someone who's the same age as me, but is completely financially independent or has done some like really cool thing, like I might feel a little bit of like, oh, like, uh, and, and that feeling, I guess, uh, mostly is, is jealousy. But it comes out where, like, it doesn't really impact my journey. Like, whatever someone else has done doesn't impact my journey most of the time. Like, like I said, there are some instances where it's, like, a little bit more nuanced. Uh, even then, I, I think we can probably talk about this more as we go through the video. Uh, even then, it probably doesn't make sense to hold any of those negative feelings. Uh, but th- that's the first thing I'm kind of thinking of is these situations where we kind of end up, like, comparing ourselves to other people when their path and what they've done doesn't really impact our path as well as it doesn't really say anything about us. Like maybe the person did work a lot harder and figured it out and got it done. And like, that's awesome. But maybe they had an easier path or maybe, you know, there's all these different variables and everyone's path is different that while those feelings are really normal, I think it's super common for people to feel that way. It's probably worth kind of like working through and picking those apart. Yeah. No, I agree. You brought up a really interesting worthwhile point because in the scenario, like your colleague gets a promotion and you don't, and you might feel sad or upset because maybe you felt like you deserved that promotion a little bit more, but they ended up getting it. But what you mentioned that resonated with me was like, you don't technically know everything that they've been doing, all the things that they've been doing on their end in comparison to you. So how can you really know that's an unknown and you're making this assumption that you deserve it more potentially, but who really knows, you know, if your friend is a, a, or your colleague is a friend, then, you know, being happy for the success really, it doesn't impact you (laughs) to any degree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think there's two pieces to kind of pick apart, which is that there, there, there are two separate uh, events going on when when somebody else is successful and, and you don't feel good about it. One is that there's this event of this person, and I think it makes the most sense in the context of a friendship or someone you at least know. But there's this person and they have achieved something that, that, that likely they're proud of or feel good about or want celebrated. And so there's one piece of like getting into that experience with them mm-hmm. and, and being able to kind of celebrate with them or just show support or be part of that journey. And then I think there's another part where sometimes what it activates in us is this comparison of like, mm-hmm. oh, they got the promotion. Like I didn't, what does that say about me? Yeah. And there's like this work that needs to be done over here. And it's really, really easy for those two things to collide in a way that's like, I like, I feel bad about this thing or I have stuff to work through. I'm going to try to take you down a couple notches so that I don't feel as bad. And I don't think there's any scenarios, at least that I can think of where that's actually useful. Right. So I think that's something at least to like start thinking about is in the scenarios where we, we 
see someone else being successful and we don't feel good. Um, for me, like this most often happens when I see people that are, that are way more successful than me in some way, more, more successful. Um, and there is a, a, like a, a initial reaction to like, oh, well, they probably X, Y, Z, like some sort of excuse for, for why they have this thing that I don't. Um, and I think just like spending a little bit more time being like, okay, why does this make me feel so uncomfortable? What am I worried about? Um, because most of the time, like I was saying, it unlocks something else in you or it's about something else in you and it has nothing to do with whatever this other person has done. Absolutely. Yeah, I can 100% relate to it. And it just made me think of this one situation that happened just a few years ago where I actually did a brother-sister trip to Mexico back in June a few years ago. And it was just an opportunity for us to bond because I had been living on the East Coast for a while and he was living in California. So we wanted to have this fun adventure, brother-sister trip together. And on that trip, we were out to dinner, nice seafood restaurant, and he tells me that he's going to propose to his girlfriend (laughs) in a few months. And I was just like, you know, and I knew that he had had so many struggles in dating and relationships and had to work through a lot of like self-confidence issues to that him proposing is such a huge milestone of his progress and where he's been in life. But even though I was like happy for him at the same time and like thrilled and excited for him at the same time, I like burst into tears (laughs) because I couldn't get over myself and And yeah, I admit I was making it about me. I was kind of upset because at that point, this was actually right after um, maybe six months or so after I had broken up with a serious boyfriend of almost four years, essentially. And, and it just like, and I was single and I had like no potential prospects in in the line and I was dating and I was just still figuring my life after ending this serious relationship. And I was upset because my baby brother, who's four and a half years younger than me, is going to get married before I am. And I, I made that mean like, oh, I, he's got it. How can he have it figured out before me, like to get to this huge milestone in his life before me when I'm older? I have way more relationship experience than him. And he's just getting there like, like that. <laughs> and I had a a breakdown, but I definitely felt like guilt for feeling upset when I should be in a celebration mode. And, and I didn't want to (laughs) cry. Like you can't necessarily control those emotions when they come up. But what I did do uh, later that evening, when we got home, I called one of my coaching buddies, my friend, one of my past coaches to kind of like, even though I wasn't working with her directly anymore, I just was like, I need some serious coaching right now. (laughs) like in a breakdown emotionally about what happened and um you know she talked me through it and just helped me see that you know yeah I was making it all about me and I was judging myself for not being where I thought I should be at that point in my life and I realized that ultimately I was exactly where I needed to be in my life and it would have much be be it'd be much better for me to be broken up with that person that was not a good fit for me in the long run than to like marry him and then not like be able to have what I want out of life with kids and like that whole picture. <laughs> that would have been a way worse path for me to like be married to someone that wasn't in alignment with what I want out of life and to just continue down that path for the sake of hitting that marriage milestone. And I just really evaluated that. And I was like, wow, yeah, that's not, you know, getting married isn't even that important to me. It's really, you know, what do I really want out of life? And marriage is just, you know, it's, it's great, but I don't know, for me personally, I don't feel like it's necessary. What I want is to build a family. And if there's a piece of paper that, you know, bonds us, okay, cool. But if not, that's okay too. It's like, I want to work towards building a family. And so when I realized that, you know, I was exactly where I needed to be in my life at that point in time, that I needed to be single for a little while before I found like the love of my life, the next love of my life, essentially. 
And that kind of helped me get out of my own way of, you know, not being able to express my happiness for my brother. I felt super guilty about that and just like actually be happy for him and enjoy the rest of our trip together. So I brought up a lot of interesting points <laughs> for me. But one, uh, maybe the most interesting one off the top of my head is, it seems like, or I guess I, it's more of a question. Do you think that was something that you were already thinking about or trying to work through because of the recency of your other breakup and that exacerbated it because it was such a present example of like, you, you know, here's, here's this little brother who's done the thing that I expected to have done. Yeah. Um, I, guess, I guess what I'm saying is, do you think that without the, the relationship that you just had, um, you know, you said it was within six months or so, yeah. do you think it would have been as strong of a feeling? I, I really can't say because I know in that point in time, you know, yes, I was fresh out of a breakup in a sense, but, you know, if I was still with that person, if we had that vacation together a year before and I was in that relationship, I don't know if I would have been as upset or actually I feel like if I was still in that long-term relationship and my brother's telling me he's, he's planning to propose, I think there would have been some jealousy, <laughs> honestly. Jealousy because it's like, I've been with my boyfriend way longer. Why hasn't he popped the question <laughs> kind of a thing? <laughs> that would have probably been the thoughts in my head, I think, at, at that point. But actually, I think, you know, what helped the coaching that I got from my friend that day that helped was to actually realize that it's perfectly okay to feel what I was feeling and that it's, it's normal. She was telling me about how when her little sister got pregnant before she did, <laughs> it was just like she had those same experience. And it's like, I don't know if it's something about like a younger sibling achieving certain milestones before you, because you're always, I guess you just grow up comparing yourself to your siblings and how you perform <laughs> or achieve more. And because it's like, there are people like, if it was someone outside of my family, I don't know if I would care, I'd be happy for them. But if it's like my brother, cause we're, we grew up in the same pathway. So we should be able to like, <laughs> you know, we should have the same like skill sets to get to certain places <laughs> in time, supposedly. But this is all, all crap basically in my head. <laughs> yeah, the reason, I, the reason I asked that question uh, is cause I was curious to kind of tease out the pieces of uh, seeing if, if it made sense that maybe some of these issues are things that are kind of like lingering with us or like hanging around. And then when someone else mm -hmm. gets whatever the thing is or something close to something that we're still working on or haven't worked through yet, mm -hmm. then it acts as like an emotional trigger point of like, Oh, like what? Like, no way. There's this thing that like I've been working through and I felt like I had plenty of time. And like now this other thing has happened. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the kind of what I was like thinking about is just, like how does that fit but it sounds like and the more i think about it it's probably not necessarily true like it probably can be true that it can exacerbate certain certain feelings um but it, it, it sounds a little bit more to me and more i think about like expectations or like uh just this kind of idea of like how life should play out or what paths should look like and then the comparison against other people and i think that's a pretty common mindset or idea that people cling on to is that life should go a certain way and there are certain milestones and seeing other people hit them can trigger some of that jealousy right no i agree and it's just i think it's this idea that we should hurt hit certain milestones by certain ages that kind of gets us in trouble with these emotions that come up when we're not at those milestones at the expected ages that is what society tells us to be because you know we can't necessarily it's not like i anticipated to be in that relationship for four years and then oh yeah we call it quits and then <laughs> people in marriages they don't necessarily go into marriages expecting to get divorced well, I hope most people don't, but it's just like life, life happens sometimes and it throws you curveballs, and you just kind of have to adjust and adapt in those moments. And that's all you can really do and learn from those experiences from the past so you can grow. This is going to end up a tiny bit tangential, but uh, what came to mind for me is 
the difference between having your actions or your aspirations based in values and uh, against based in goals. Right. Right. Like it sounds like, and I've experienced this before too, when I have uh, certain goals that I want to hit and other people hit them around me, even if it's after, before, or whatever, I feel some kind of like jealousy around that because I'm so focused on the goal. Right. And just while you were talking, I was thinking like, if I was more focused on my values and like who I want to be, mm. exactly what I do is less important. Now, I don't know if that like resolves the feelings, right? It still doesn't feel awesome to see someone get something you wanted. But I do know that in, in the past or in similar situations, and I can get us back on track after this side note, but kind of thinking about the values helps more than trying to pin so much on these milestones. And it yeah. really came home when, not, not for me personally, it's not something, but there's someone that I know that just had this really, really strong uh, desire to get married by a very specific age. Right. And when it came and passed, they were like so beat up about it. And then they were getting, uh, you know, these like jealous feelings, seeing every single person getting married. Like every time anyone got married, they felt some type of way about it. And I remember talking to them about it and asking like, but what do you, like, what do you actually care about? Do you want to just be married to be married? Like that's a, you just want to check the box. And it's right. like, well, of course not. Like that's not what I want. I want someone who, you know, cares for me or I want a loving relationship. And and when I talk, when I talk to her about like, okay, but does that, is that locked to a timeline? Like that, the thing you said you really want doesn't seem locked to a timeline. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't seem to make sense to me to focus so much on getting the box checked when what you actually want, or at least as you described it to me, you know, maybe it's different if you want kids so that you're a certain age when they're a certain age or, you know, your plans are a little different, but how this specific instance was described to me, I was like, then, then I don't know why you're focusing on, on that piece. And not only that, it's hindering your goal by trying to push you into the checkbox instead of what you actually care about, which is the relationship. Cause she was pushing, you know, to try to get married like as fast as she could. And it was kind of making, as most guys are a little bit wary of like, uh, like, <laughs> I've been dating that long. A lot of guys. Yeah. Like, okay. Second date. When do you think you are wanting to get married? <laughs> yeah. So I think that's, um, I don't know, maybe it's not like the most useful piece, but at least a tangentially related thing of thinking about, um, you know, if some, some, somebody else succeeds in another way and it makes you feel a certain way, what it is that you actually care about. Because I know for me, when I've dug into that, a lot of times I've been like, I, I don't actually care that, you know, this other guy that's the same age as me mm -hmm. has started a business. I care that I haven't started mine. Right. But also, maybe it's a totally different, like, maybe it's a totally different path. Mm -hmm. And maybe if I just focus on what I really want, which is there's a certain type of product I want to bring into the world. Right. Then the fact that this person brought some other product into the world right. matters less. I guess it's just about, like, pinpointing the details and parsing them out helped me a little bit. Yeah, I could see that. I think what I want to distinguish is you know, seeing like someone else your age create a business, but also evaluating like what's important to you. You know, maybe that is creating a business, but like disassociating from the time frame of like what backgrounds and experience could allow certain time frames. But are are you also something to consider is like are you like actually taking actions to get to your goal, or are you just kind of like whining being like oh he did this I wanted to do that but I have like this situation <laughs> going on and you know for someone who's like oh I want to get married but they're going on zero dates or not even being proactive about it and whining that like all these other people are getting married and I'm not but you're terrified to like go on one date then it's just like you gotta evaluate like it's okay I mean it's okay to want that it's okay to be you know upset that you're not where you want to be, but it's just like, it's a good time to step back and just evaluate, you know, maybe I'm not to whatever milestone that is, but am I taking the actions that align with my values? Like I want a healthy, happy relationship. Am I going on dates? <laughs> That's, there's just like kind of that correlation of just, you know, stepping and then actually considering, you know, maybe you're going on 
like in the scenario if someone was wanting a happy healthy relationship and they could let go of the idea of like you need to get married by this time frame if they can let go of that and the goal is to have a happy healthy relationship are they going on like one date a month one day a week five dates a week and just looking at like this is actually a performance thing that I've gotten from a lot of leadership training of just being like not judging yourself for whatever actions that you're taking let's say or like my business goal is to make 10k every month and I'm only making like 5k instead of beating myself up about making 5k because that's still progress but but I didn't hit my goal of 10k a month you know just looking at like okay what other actions can I take to get me to the 10k milestone for the next month like clearly i'm not making a sufficient enough actions or maybe my actions are ineffective so i have to evaluate like what do i need to do differently to get me to my goals instead of just keep doing the same things and getting the same outcomes like maybe you got to change something up maybe you have to try something different versus like considering yourself as a failure for like oh i'm not to my 10k or i'm not in that relationship just like evaluating like okay Maybe I'm not there yet, but like, what would it take to get there? Yeah, I think that's super important to be aware of the actions you're taking and the impacts they're having. And I'm actually thinking in the same vein of like the, the topic, seeing someone else be successful, you, you may have an initial emotional response that you need to like work through and get some space from. But when you're in a more calm, rational place, those are the exact people who you can look to to figure out the process for what you want to achieve if they've already done it. Right. Um, and you know, for something like finding someone to marry, uh, mm -hmm. there might be a little bit of nuance or some different stuff because you might not be looking for the same type of person or whatever else, but you yeah. can leverage these people assuming that they're people you know or, or at least they're willing to like uh, contact. You can leverage their path and their process to right. see the action steps you need to take to make it because I do think some portion of the time it's uh, I, I can speak from personal experience like okay i want to build this like business idea and i've worked on this thing and this other person has already done it part of the frustration is i'm trying to take some steps and my steps aren't working so yeah. i get to the perfect place to go to that other person and be like what steps did you use how did you do this Right. Because it's something I want to achieve. And again, you, you probably or might need to work through like some emotional stuff first so that you can communicate in like a very uh, controlled way or like how you want to without um, saying something you don't mean. Right. But once, once you get in the right mind space, like that's a great resource to figure out what the steps are. Right. Yes. It requires, you know, actually being humble and and vulnerable to it, it it takes something to admit that you're not where you want to be it, it it does require some level of vulnerability to admit like hey i'm not where i want to be but that's a great stepping stone to get where you want to be if you can admit it for one get out of denial <laughs> about the problem then admit it and then actually be open and receptive to help from someone who's done it successfully um, whether that's work or relationships or whatever or just get feedback from someone or just get feedback from multiple people you know it's like not everyone has the same path but you know you get a bunch of different ideas from people who have successfully accomplished it you know i'm sure you'd get a lot of value out of that yeah because even if even if your path doesn't end up the the exact same like right. there's a very high chance that they can give you information that's useful for you in your process mm -hmm. Um, as long as you can keep your emotions down enough to not be petty about it and be like, oh, whatever, you didn't work hard anyway, but it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I think the, the big task is, is getting over yourself <laughs> and being able to kind of be willing to admit it and move, move past it and yeah, seek it. So maybe that's a, a topic to like dig into a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. I feel like in... in in my case, the times that not being happy for other people when they're successful is the worst is when I dwell on it and I don't get out of the frame. Mm -hmm. uh, and instead of being like, oh, like I feel some type, of, some type of way about this, let me process this. I go like, this person doesn't deserve it because of this and this, what else, this, 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 this. Like I think that um, 
for me is one of the most important parts is like finding the escape hatch to that train of thought as early as possible and finding the way to um, at the very least, like I was talking about before, get into this space for a while, which is to like celebrate and, and yeah. be with the person in their achievement and at least hold off on this stuff. Even if, even if it's just the smallest, like, wow, that's really cool. And then leave immediately and then deal with it. And then maybe later talk about it, you know, more genuinely. But um, I think that's, that's been one of the, the keys for me in, in terms of uh, dissolving some of that initial emotion. And there are likely other tools that people use just to dissolve strong emotions in general or, to, or dissolve is maybe a weird word, but to process them um, that might be useful in these situations too. Right. Yeah. I think being able to identify the emotion to realize that you are in a emotional <laughs> reactive state is important and using whatever tools that might be to kind of help you kind of decompress from that, those heightened emotions, whether that's mindfulness, for me, what I, I know when I know I'm in like a kind of like that emotional breakdown state, I know the thing, even though I don't necessarily want to do it, I know the thing that's going to help me out of that state fastest is actually getting coaching or talking to someone to like, you know, the opinions in my head are really not accurate or <laughs> when I'm really emotional. So it's good to get like a third party kind of objective feeling to help me like think about it rationally because clearly when I'm emotional rational thoughts are kind of a struggle so <laughs> it helps to have the third party to give me feedback and to kind of calm me and yeah just being and that's why I called my friend and coach um as soon as I got home <laughs> it's like I, I do not want to be in this state I don't want to feel upset I want to be happy for my brother so I'm like, I need to get out of this ASAP. So I'm calling people. And I, if she didn't answer, then I call whoever was next on my list. <laughs> I just keep calling people until I'm like in a good place in space with myself. Yeah. And I think it's really important to be able to notice that. I mean, obviously easier said than done, but I think it's really important to be able to see and be aware of what space you are in uh, and then decide how you're going to carry the interaction forward. Because right. I think... Uh, I can't think of any examples off the top of my head, but I know there's been times when I've been in a, in a jealous or just generally negative emotional state during someone else's accomplishment, but tried to stay in that space of like, oh, I'm so happy for you. But like, it wasn't genuine. Yeah. I mean, you can tell it's not genuine because I'm so preoccupied with the emotion and the stuff that, that, that I was dealing with. So I feel like that's it. That's an important key. And, and it's, a, it's really just an important skill in general to be able to like identify your emotions and be aware of, what you need to do to to act on them appropriately but specifically in this case i think um how you're going to be in that space because right. it's a vulnerable position or not, it's not vulnerable it's just it shows what kind of relationship it is you know if i just finished writing my book or something and i and i'm excited and i want to show it to my friend and he just dumps on me <laughs> like oh cool wow i could write a book too if i wanted to like <laughs> okay like all right you know it's, it's like a very um again i can't think of a better word than vulnerable but it's not quite the right word but it's, it's a space that if you act in a way that you don't need to if you let your emotions get the better of you and act a little bit petty or, or whatever else it can really cause like some serious damage to the relationship depending on um you know who the person is and what the accomplishment is and whatnot but um you know people people want to have other people share in their successes um yeah. and if you don't or can't mm -hmm. then it's probably better if you you know get out of that space until you are ready mm -hmm. right yeah yeah no i could see you know by me reacting um to my brother in that way by crying it actually he did express to me that you know it kind of had him feel like he's got to hold back more with sharing good news with me because I might get upset by it. And that was just like heartbreaking for me because I'm really close with my brother. And I, you know, I want us to be able to share like everything and anything with each other. And so for me to react in that like not so fantastic way, you know, it does put a strain on the relationship if he's feeling like, oh, I got to be careful what I say around sister. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, because... 
I mean, I mean, I imagine this is most relevant when it's people you actually know. You know, when it's when I read in a Facebook post or something like this person did this awesome thing. I'm like, well, cool, but like it's it's not nearly as high stakes as when or high stakes. I don't know. That's kind of a lot, but it's not nearly as important as when it is. You know, close family, friends, things like that, and most of the close relationships are are probably strong enough to kind of weather it. Like like you were saying, it's not like an immediate like oh, that made you upset, like, done, cut off, goodbye. But yeah. it, it, it does start pushing the relationship in a way that's less than ideal. Um, right. And there could have been, uh, there are multiple ways that people could react in terms of, it, it seems like in that instance, it was like, okay, like, maybe I'll hold back a little bit because this was hurtful. But it could also be like, hey, this person is not excited for me when I do, like, good things, you know, maybe I'll, Maybe I'll hold back from sharing it all. Maybe I'll hold back from collaborating. Maybe I'll hold back from, you know, all these different things. I'm not saying in your specific relationship that's the case, but in general, th- those are the kinds of reactions that are going to come if you respond from that, like, emotional or negative space. Totally, yeah. Just, uh, I think the main, the main points are just, like, being able to figure out what space you're in right. um, and really trying your best to, to celebrate with others when they're successful. Because if you think about it from, from the other position, you know, when you have something cool yeah. to share with someone and, and they're not in the right emotional space to respond, like you would probably, I, I know I would rather have them most of the time. If they, if they have their own stuff to deal with, then deal with it. Like, okay, sometimes I'm nice enough to deal with their stuff while I'm also trying to share my stuff. But uh, ideally, people, people will have the tools that they need to figure that out reinforcing what we've established here today of you know just being present of your mental space and yeah learning to let go of making it about yourself (laughs) i guess is the moral of our story here so thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you next week